This is the Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the clubhouse, it's Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Megan. This is Kate. This is Amanda. And Nadine. And tonight we watched Buffy. Kate is going to give us a brief summary of the movie. So Buffy is a normal ditzy girl in the 90s. And then she finds out she's... Um, some magical vampire slayer, and then she kills a bunch of vampires, and then she continues to kill more vampires, and they attack her prom, and she kills more vampires. And that was the end. Love it. Senior dance. Then they got three more dances. Oh, yeah, 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 it wasn't quite the prom. That's right. (laughs) Still more dances. Semi-formal, the full formal. (laughs) Of course. A less fancy dance than prom, but a more (laughs) fancy dress than you would wear to a wedding. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and Amanda has some fun facts for us. I do. These are the Buffy the Vampire fun facts. Our first category Mm -hmm. is the cuts and changes that were made. Okay. So I pointed this out when we were watching the movie. Seth Green is in it. (laughs) You can only see the back of his head because he gets kicked off screen. (laughs) But his part in the movie was cut. Because he's actually a werewolf, and so it's insulting that they would play him as a vampire. But they couldn't have known that yet because he doesn't come in as a werewolf for a minute. Yeah, right. yeah. So why, no. why they cut him? They were just like, not for, so I think for time, maybe, or they something. They were like, you're so short. The director also wanted to get more cameos by, like, the more famous names. Her trainer is already Donald Sutherland. so like, very famous. But she originally wanted to get David Bowie, Mick Jagger, or <laughs> Carrie Elvis to make cameos as vampires. It was cut due to budgetary constraints. I could have seen Carrie Elvis as one of the vampires. I feel like that tracks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the film had a rush deadline because Luke Perry, the love interest in the movie, was also doing 90210 at the same time. There were quotes where he was like talking about like in the daytime he would do 90210 and then he'd do the night shoots for Buffy in the evening and it was just like really exhausting. And so they were rushing to get it done as quickly as possible. And apparently this was unusual. They actually kept Josh Whedon on set in case they need to make any script changes or rewrites or anything like during filming because of the tight schedule. I feel like if I had written something and it was being like directed and filmed by someone else, I would also want to be on set because mm-hmm. I would not want people just making executive decisions, but then my name is still the writer. Absolutely. Yeah, and one of the rewrites they were looking at was adding a female sidekick for Lotho, the main like bad guy. They wanted it to be played by Joan Chen. She's an actor in Twin Peaks, the television show, but she couldn't take the role. So they rewrote it and oh my gosh, what's his name? I don't know. Describe them in any way. The guy who plays Pee Wee Herman. The one who touched himself. <laughs> Oh. I'm sorry, man. That's the only way I think about it. Well, he was a, he was a sidekick. Okay. In the role instead. Oh wait, what? Like in the one that we just watched? No, that was Pee Wee Herman. Oh, uh, that's a was it? Yeah. I think I might be thinking of someone else because there have been multiple Pee Wee Hermans, right? No, just the one. That was him. Am I the only one confused by this, Megan? What are you doing? <laughs> Morgan, oh, oh yeah. okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, nineteen ninety-two. Yeah, oh, she looks so different. Yeah, mm-hmm. makeup. Oh, huh. Paul Rubens. That's it. Paul Rubens. Mm-hmm. Joss did not like all the changes. This next subcategory is Jossie no likey. <laughs> 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 The original script by Josh Whedon was heavily rewritten to make the movie lighter. In the original script, Buffy burns down the high school gym in which the dance is being held in an effort to destroy the vampires. In Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the television show, this fact is referred to several times as the series is seen as a spin-off from the original unproduced screenplay rather than this movie. Josh also found Donald Sutherland extremely difficult to be around. Interesting. Sutherland rewrote most of his dialogue in scenes, often making the scenes incomprehensible in Whedon's opinion. Whedon praised Sutherland's abilities as an actor, but called his behavior rude and Sutherland a dick. Example, in the original version of the script, Merrick, Donald Sutherland's character, commits suicide to escape being turned into a vampire by Lothos. That does not happen. As yeah. you saw that, Lothos straight up stabs him. Do you think when she burned down the gym that there were also, like, alive human beings in there? <laughs> I, mean, I can knows. only imagine that there I, were. I would have to imagine yeah. that there were. Joss was so frustrated by how much of his vision had been mishandled and how much of it was being rewritten, he eventually left the set during production and never came back. Oh, yeah, Josh's original version of the script was eventually released as a comic called The Ord. He also maintains that the movie 
should be considered a standalone and that any of the events, characters, and character traits in this movie should not be referred to as canon for the television series of the same name. Here are some show versus movie changes. Buffy is a senior at Henry High School in the movie, two years older than the Buffy in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the television show, they who starts at Sunnydale High School as a <clears throat> sophomore. They were like, it's gonna be a show. We're any longer than that. In this film, Buffy experiences cramps whenever she is in proximity of a vampire. She cramps. explicitly compares the cramps to menstrual cramps. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So weird. This aspect of her powers was dropped from the TV series. Yeah. Like Amanda no likey. <laughs> no. no. Exactly. <laughs> they were like, she can kill vamps, but like when she sees them, her uterus hurt. I don't know if anyone <laughs> listening has had cramps, but they're horrible and you don't want to do anything. Fighting is the least yeah. likely thing I'm yeah, about I'm to, to do. do as I'm... Back flips and front <laughs> handsprings. <Yeah. laughs> my reflexes would not be up there. No. <laughs> you throw a knife at my face when I'm feeling cramps. It's going in the face. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. The only way it's not is if I have totally unrelated to the knife decided to bend over in pain. <laughs> <laughs> My next subcategory is Joss's vision. He wanted to cast Alyssa Milano in the original Buffy movie. And I guess like in very early versions, Buffy was called Rhonda, the immortal waitress. No, I hate it. <laughs> Whedon saw Buffy as the opposite of a typical horror movie character. He wanted her to stand in stark contrast to, quote, the little blonde girl who goes into the dark alley and gets killed in every horror movie. Studios actually hated the name Buffy for the movie, but Whedon chose it in juxtaposition. He liked it because it was a silly name for a powerful female hero. He thought the title was a throwback to B-horror movies and audiences would love seeing a more modern character and fresh dialogue that reimagined old horror tropes. It does make me wonder, like, if she were named something just any bit better than Buffy, how many kids would have this in part of their name? Because <laughs> oh, there are so many, yeah. like, die-hard Buffy fans, but it's such a crazy name. You don't need any baby Buffies. And Josh, after seeing the finished product, felt that the film didn't quite quote unquote get Buffy. Inspired by his dissatisfaction, Whedon wrote the pilot for what would become the Buffy television series. And now these are just miscellaneous facts. Ben Affleck plays a member of the opposing team during a basketball game in the movie. And this is actually Hilary Swank's theatrical debut. Oh. I know. Yeah. Wow. This was also Paul Rubin's first major role after his notorious arrest. After? After. Mm -hmm. What was he arrested? The incident in the theater. Oh, yes, yes. And the Buffy the Vampire Slayer script was bought by Dolly Parton's production company in 1991. I love Dolly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are my fun facts. So scarce. I don't know that I have one. It wasn't really like a... No, it is like lighter. A, like they... Right. It's not like a jump scare type of movie. Like, did anyone feel like there was a scare that they saw in the movie? Maybe when they crashed through the wall at the dance... You're kind of expecting it, but it's kind of a jump at the same time. It was creepy when the guy was just in the gym when Buffy was doing a little <laughs> tumbling workout. And then that whole no. exchange was just very creepy. <laughs> no. And the fact that she just like stood there normally was not the response that I think any of the women that I know would have had. Any people that I know would have been like backing out of the gym. Like, wouldn't have yeah. gone to the cemetery with him. No, we never go yeah. to a second location. No, that's where you get murdered. <laughs> Yes. I guess that's also like a, could be a scary scene if you're more sensitive is when the, the second vampire comes out of the grave in that scene. Yes. Because okay. Buffy didn't even know about that one. Sure. Donald was testing her. Man, sometimes I'll hear other people talking about like movies that scare them and stuff and I'll be like, you're such a child. It's nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Amateur hour. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Laughs. I think there were plenty of laughs yes. that we can think of. One that I really enjoyed was yes. when the like henchman with no left arm was dying. I mean, it was so dramatic for no reason and I loved it. <laughs> that was Adlin, by the way. Oh, I knew it. was amazing. Yes. <laughs> Way to just steal my favorite. I do <laughs> love that they all kept it together and no one broke. And professional. <laughs> For sure, that would be my biggest trouble if I were ever involved in acting would be not breaking. Just in general, the like 90s lingo just always oh, yeah. made me smile. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, good times. What's your second favorite? Your favorite <laughs> oh, my. oh, I got it. When the principal is handing out detention slips to all the dead <laughs> vampires. Detention, detention, yeah, detention, detention. 
<laughs> it did seem to like take a turn to be like even more ridiculously funny and over the top. I liked it. It was very funny when Buffy got home after this first big fight and her mom's like, do you know what time it is? Yes. <laughs> and then she just wanted to know the time. I'm not a concerned mom, just a concerned watch owner. <laughs> she had places to be. All right. Uh, next is least favorite parts. Now, I would probably say the beginning scenes that we have with Donald Sutherland. Because mm-hmm. he was just too creepy. I mean, he was always staring when he's by the bleachers. And then again, when he's in the, in the women's locker room. Like, it just, it gives off bad vibes. Did he need to seem so creepy? I get that he's he's trying to tell someone who he doesn't know at all that they're the chosen one and they have to fight vampires. I just feel like he yeah. could have gone about it in a better way. Yeah, not great social <laughs> skills. The weird flashback scenes for me. Oh, I mean, to her past lives? Yeah, mm. yeah. I think maybe they went on a little long or there was one too many of them, but I just found them really odd. Her, just her bad friends. Like, they were <laughs> bad. Yeah. Like, the Mean Girls before Mean Girls was a movie. Yeah, I would say the general sexist tone. Favorite parts. I feel like my funny part was my favorite part. I really enjoyed that. I also really liked at the end when the credits were rolling, the... <laughs> newscaster and her interviews a post dance mm-hmm. with like all of the different people and they were saying really weird things <laughs> how one guy described the vampires as he thought they might be young republicans <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> which was just an insane thing to say because i'm not sure that i would ever be like oh <laughs> You know, I'm These describing a vampire, and I'm like, they could have been. Leather jackets, pointy teeth, pointy ears. Young, Young Republicans. Republicans. That's who it was. <laughs> the pointy ears was the giveaway. I love a good training montage. Mm-hmm. So, good. yeah, that was that A lot was of good training classic. outfits, too. Oh, yeah. In this abandoned hotel for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. I mean, I one of this is one of my favorites. I love it. So campy. Like, I love the, the 90s fashion of it all. Like, what? <laughs> so, Amanda, do you like the cheerleading outfits? They don't bother me. Okay. So <laughs> I like them. I know you don't, but First I like off, it. Let's describe it to anyone who hasn't seen it. Let me paint you a word picture. Imagine a what you think at first glance looks like a normal cheerleading outfit, except for it's mid-drift. But guess what? The skirt is actually shorts, and underneath that, they have on, like, metallic purple leggings for no reason, and a metallic purple tank top. So, even though it's a midriff, you can't see all the tummies, but you can see some legs, because some people aren't wearing the leggings, who knows why. I love it. It's so good. I <laughs> love the, the yellow leather jacket. Mm-hmm. I love all of her outfits. Everything about it is so good. You would look good in a yellow leather jacket, I really think. I have a hard time with yellows. So, like, the fashion and the overall campy vibe is your favorite part? Yes, and then like the random fight scene in the <laughs> Pasadena float storage area. So weird, so random. E- everything. The set design, so good. I would say my favorite is uh, when Pike's friend, which we love David Arquette, so we good to do. see him. Happy to see him. <laughs> and also another very funny moment was them with their hot dog. <laughs> when his friend comes back and is clearly a vampire, and he's so tired and groggy at first that he very almost invites him in, and then he's like, wait, you're floating. <laughs> like, he literally yeah. says, what are you on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, are you okay? And David it's like, I'm, I'm fine. He's <laughs> like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> and he doesn't invite him in. And I just love that. Because usually in horror movies, people are so stupid. Mm-hmm. And it's just nice whenever they make a vaguely reasonable. All right. Plot quality. I, well, I agree with Amanda. Love the campy feel of it all. I wouldn't say the plot quality is there. It's not great. It doesn't take away from my enjoyment of the movie, which is a unique take for me because (laughs) usually plot quality is everything to me. And with, without plot quality, I usually don't enjoy it. But this movie, like, really plays into that campy feeling of it, that that's why you enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's not because the quality of the plot is, yeah. like, superb. Yeah, all the female mm-hmm. leads are, like, these over-the-top valley girls. And the vampires are, like, the drama of Lothos when he's just, like, he takes his hand out of the coffin to be kissed. Or, like, even when he <laughs> dies, he, like, covers his face with his cape. <laughs> oh, man, which also... When Donald Sutherland did that one thing where he fixed his mustache. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Great moment. For what reason? <laughs> so good. The drama. Okay. The old plot. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I feel like 
you don't watch it for the plot. You watch it for just the pure entertainment of it. So it didn't bother me, but there really wasn't much of a plot. <laughs> killing vamps. That's the yeah, plot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you gotta kill Wolf, though. So he's been around for centuries killing Slayer. <laughs> yeah. Go. And maybe we just have such complex plots nowadays in movies that, like, then the 90s, they didn't really care as much about the plot. I, again, I think this movie is excellent. Absolutely perfect. That's not the question. <laughs> no, I think the plot is good. I mean, I feel like there's like other things that maybe probably got cut because Donald Sutherland comes to Buffy and he's like, look, you know, I'm a little late, uh, late to the game on this one. You've gone so many years without training. I feel like there's like stuff missing there about like why Buffy wasn't in training sooner, why he hadn't found her sooner and things like that. So there's something like pieces to the puzzle that are missing. But I think overall, it, like, I mean, it all basically makes sense. Like she's the reincarnation of like this slayer who needs to fight Lothos and this incarnation or this like her being hasn't been ready to finish him off or whatever but Buffy's special because we're keen fashion sense it's it's not true. <laughs> and it's just nice of the bad guy to wait until she's good and ready but <laughs> I mean it's like fruit you don't want to eat it too early when it's not right <laughs> I would say that for me the plot quality was exactly okay it's not like we got done watching it and I was like bad plot quality <laughs> like I didn't think that yeah, to myself you weren't like what's happening why did we do this <laughs> yeah but at the same time it doesn't like stand to scrutiny which mm -hmm. I mean a lot of times they don't. I do think that it just could have used a bit more of like an overall, this is the story arc and here are the little story, you know, like a mm -hmm. bit more of like, yeah. I am going to rate it for yellow leather jackets. Do we do points? Do we, is it? You can. Yeah. I usually do half points personally, but some people oh. like to get wild and do. I do whatever oh. I feel like. Yeah. Ooh. Thing. You do what's good for you. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go 4.372 leather jackets. What? <laughs> Don't right. want Anna to make you feel bad. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, this is five out of five yellow leather jackets for me. I love this movie. I grew up watching it. I think it's so great. I also want a strong blonde female lead. Of course. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like Clueless, but with vampires. I love Clueless. <laughs> yeah. I love, love Clueless. Now, Clueless, that is a perfect movie. Yes, <laughs> truly. It helps when movies that star women are written by women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That, in my opinion, that's kind of what we're missing here. Yeah, uh, I mean, Josh doesn't for a man yeah. doesn't do a terrible job of writing women as strong female leads. I, I mean, just considering I, he's an abusive, horrible person. I personally yeah. don't put a ribbon in my hair before I fall asleep. <laughs> that was a dream, the creepy old vampire's dream. That Whatever, he made her I'm do. just saying, she did in fact have the ribbon in her hair. Yeah, and you just see her take it out and be like, "Why is this here?" Look, I'm three. I wish I could give it higher, but it does feel very sexist to me overall. And so 3.67 is what I have to give it. Uh, that's just how it felt to me. Because I do, I love the overall vibe. I love the 90s aspect. I think that the acting is good by everyone involved. But there is just this sexist vibe, sexist undertone that's happening the whole time that turns me off. I mean, I get that because, like, the the Shallow Valley girlness is strong mm -hmm. in this. But I think it's, I mean, at least part of it is to show, like, a stark contrast from where Buffy starts and where she ends. And how, like, she evolved with a short period of time, making her super incredibly shallow. It's easier to make her, like, a better person in, like, the short time of a film. Yes, I think that's all true. I think that in the... TV series, it's a lot easier because they have Willow balancing around mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and longer to do it. Yes. Yeah. Which is also just nice because Willow and Buffy are two totally different women who are strong, great women in totally different ways, which mm -hmm, is nice. Yeah. And, like, that also happens, like, after Buffy's, like, no, she's a slayer and has already burned down her high school gym with the vampires in it. So she's already done all of this. And so she's, like, not quite as shallow as she might have started as. She's a little firebug. I did love the principal handing out detention. So, <laughs> so good. good. And then everyone's dead. And Luke Perry's like, I saved you, dude. This is not the time. <laughs> the gym floor is covered in corpses. But, yes, let's waltz. <laughs> she's not like other girls, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Megan and I were talking while we were watching the movie about what an offensive statement that is when guys say that other girls are great yes <laughs> you're the one who sucks you are the problem in this equation. you can follow us on facebook instagram and twitter at scary movie clubcast and subscribe to our youtube see you next movie night and don't forget there are 56 days till halloween goodbye bye, bye. bye. live from the clubhouse it's scary movie clubcast 
Should I start again? Probably. <laughs> you cannot be laughing. It was a man <laughs> Live from the clubhouse, it's Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Megan. <laughs> Kate doesn't know. <laughs> no, Kate. What was I supposed to go next? Yeah. Kate has been on many an episode. <laughs> and continues to kill more vampires. You better do a joke. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, thank goodness that cup was empty. Just so anyone knows, the cat just knocked over a cup out of rudeness. Do you think that I should unplug the cat water thing? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought about it earlier and then forgot about it immediately. Yeah, that's not how it goes. Oh, oh cat <laughs> <laughs> hey, you meowed. It's like you the grime. <laughs> Five is like the ultimate. Yeah, yeah it's out yeah, of five. Yeah, don't go above five. That, oh, we're not no. crazy. I know. We're not unreasonable. <laughs> yeah. There is a cap. <laughs> <laughs>